Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mueller, well, first, let me ask a unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman, to submit uh, this article, Robert Mueller Unmasked, for the record. Without objection. Now, Mr. Mueller, who wrote the nine-minute comments you read at your May 29th press conference? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so that's what I thought. You didn't write it. A 2013 puff piece in The Washingtonian about Comey said basically when Comey called, you'd drop everything you were doing. It gave examples. You're having dinner with your wife and daughter. Comey calls, you drop everything and go. Uh, it, the article quoted Comey as saying if a train were coming down the track, and I quote, at least Bob Mueller will be standing on the tracks with me. Yeah. Uh, you and James Comey, have been good friends or were good friends for eight, for many years, correct? No, we were business associates. We both started off in the Justice Department about this You were good time. friends. You can work together and not be friends, but you we and were Comey friends. were friends. We were friends. That's my question. Thank you for getting to the answer. Now, before you were appointed as special counsel, uh, had you talked to James Comey in the preceding six months? No. Uh, when you were appointed as special counsel, uh, was President uh, Trump's firing of Comey something you anticipated investigating, potentially obstruction of justice? I'm not going to get into that. That's the internal deliberations in the Justice Department. Actually, it goes to your credibility, and maybe you've been away from the courtroom for a while. Credibility is always relevant. It's always material, and that goes for you, too. You're a witness before us. Let me ask you, when you talked to President Trump the day before he appointed you, or you were appointed as special counsel, you were talking to him about the FBI director position again. Uh, did he but mention the firing a, of James not, Comey? But not as a candidate. I was asked. Did he question. mention the firing of James Comey in your discussion with him? Cannot remember. Pardon? Cannot remember. I don't believe so, you but I'm not going to be specific. You don't remember. But if he did, you could have been a fact witness as to the president's comments and state of mind on firing James Comey. I suppose, uh, I suppose that's possible. Yeah. So most prosecutors want to make sure there's no appearance of impropriety. Uh, but in your case, you hired a bunch of people that did not like the president. Uh, let me ask you, when did you first learn of Peter Strzok's animus toward Donald Trump? In the summer of uh, 2017. You didn't know before he was hired? I, I'm sorry? What did you, you didn't know before he was hired for your team? Uh, you know what? Peter Strzok hated Trump. Okay. You didn't know that before he was made part of your team. Is that what you're no, saying? I did not know that. All right. Uh, when did you and first actually, learn? When, we, when he did find out, I, I acted uh, swiftly to have him reassigned elsewhere in the FBI. Well, there's some discussion about how swift that was. But when did you learn of the ongoing affair he was having with Lisa Page? Uh, about the same time I, okay. I, I learned um, from uh, Strzok. Did you ever order anybody to investigate the deletion of all of their texts uh, off of their government uh, phones? Once we found that uh, uh, Peter Strzok uh, was an author of... Uh, Did you ever... Uh, may I finish? Order, well, you're not answering my question. Did you order an investigation into deletion and reformatting of their government phones? No, there was an IG investigation ongoing. Well, listen, uh, regarding collusion or conspiracy, you didn't find evidence of any agreement, I'm quoting you, among the Trump campaign officials and any Russia-linked individuals to interfere with our U.S. election, correct? Correct. So you also note in the report that an element of any of those obstructions you referenced requires a corrupt state of mind, correct? Corrupt intent, correct. Right. And if somebody knows they did not conspire with anybody from Russia to affect the election, and they see the big Justice Department with people that hate that person coming after them, and then a special counsel appointed who hires dozen or more people that hate that person, and he knows he's innocent, 
He's not corruptly acting in order to see that justice is done. What he's doing is not obstructing justice. He is pursuing justice. And the fact that you Gentlemen's ran it out two years means you perpetuated injustice. I take, I I take your Gentlemen's question. time has expired. The witness may answer the question. I take your question.